uh, so uh, today I'll be talking about implications of the global 21 cm signal for high redshift galaxies and JWST galaxy surveys. Uh, so let me first uh, begin by introducing the edges measurement of the 21 centimeter signal. Uh, so as you all know that the edges collaboration first measured the 21 cm signal uh, in 2018. It was found to contain an absorption feature which was quite strong as compared to what the standard model would predict. Uh, so uh, in uh, ever since its announcement there have been several models that try to explain its uh, depth uh, and its timing but the shape uh, that is precisely the uh, sharp drop, flatness and the sharp rise have received lesser attention in literature. And in this talk, I will try to explain uh, how we can get the shape of the edges profile and also find out what are the implications for the astrophysics. So in this figure, on the right hand side, you will uh, see uh, the 21 centimeter signal measured by the edges collaboration, which is shown here by the black dashed line. And uh, the y, uh, sorry, the y-axis is the measurement uh, uh, of the global signal in units of milli Kelvin, and the x-axis has has a shift in decreasing fashion, so that time is towards the right-hand side. Uh, so one of the best-fitting models from my own previous work is shown by the green solid curve, and as you can uh, see that the uh, this signal uh, has the right uh, depth and the timing, but it does not have the shape which is the sharp drop and the sharp rise in the signal. So we believe that uh, this uh, uh, this sharp drop requires a rapid build up of lamina alpha photons and a rapid build up of heating mechanisms such as the heating uh, produced by the x-ray uh, photons. Uh, so uh, there are two methods that we can think of in order to get this correct shape. So we uh, the first one is we consider modifications either in the stellar properties uh, that for example the spe spectral energy distribution or we consider changes in the star formation history. Uh, the idea is uh, the same as in, uh, in both the cases basically we what we do is that given an observation we reverse engineer it and find out what are the requirements on our model. Uh, so we, for this we begin with the, uh, the main observable and this is the equation one in this uh, on this slide so uh, i'm sure you are all familiar with this expression so this is the measure of the global 21 cm signal so here by p omega h and the uh, omega b omega m and h are the usual cosmological parameters that is the redshift tr is the background temperature and t is the spin temperature so this has already been explained by professor bharat uh, so uh, Note that in uh, in this talk and in this uh, all of my work, I will basically uh, use an excess radio background along with the CMB background. This is required in order to get the correct depth uh, of the as seen in the edges uh, measurement. And TS is the spin temperature, which is given by the background temperature and the gas temperature. Note that there is no collisional coupling term because uh, uh, I am interested in the cosmic dawn period where the uh, this collision coupling term is quite negligible as compared to the Bauthausen field uh, coupling, which is uh, over here represented by X alpha. Uh, so uh, we are going to begin by uh, inverting the equation. So the first term uh, we start by the equation one, and given an observation delta T B, we can find out the required spin temperature. And with this new spin temperature, uh, we can make prediction for the lamina alpha coupling which in turn should give us the specific intensity uh, because we know that this uh, uh, lamina alpha coupling strength is proportional to the uh, specific intensity we, uh, we can make the prediction for the required specific intensity strength and finally uh, because the specific intensity requires a model for the spectral energy distribution uh, we can make prediction for the SED. So let us now see what is the uh, result of this calculation and uh, I am going to show my uh, result in form of the Lyman series photons per background related to my fiducial model and in this figure uh, on the y axis I have this quantity uh, which is uh, shown in linear scale and on the x axis I have the redshift again this is redshift in decreasing fashion so that time is towards the right hand side. So in this figure uh, there are two key features to note. Uh, First, there is a uh, 
uh, there's a first peak in this uh, required shape uh, uh, close to redshift uh, 20 or uh, 17 or 18 so this uh, uh, so this first peak should explain as the shard drop in the signal uh, and then there is a, another peak which should explain the shard rise in the signal uh, but although this uh, scheme, this calculation seems straightforward, we must investigate if we can obtain this uh, curve and we find that this kind of enhancement is uh, not achievable given our current understanding of the spectral energy distribution. However, uh, there are highly unusual population three star models that might explain the uh, shape in this, at least partially explain this result. Nevertheless, let us see what this uh, uh, with this model predicts uh, make uh, predicts the new 21 centimeter signal, and the new signal is shown by the blue solid curve, and you can clearly see that this is a significant improvement as compared to our fiducial models, and almost uh, perfect fit uh, with the observation, which is uh, again shown by the black dash curve, and the new model shown by the blue solid curve. Uh, I would like to remind you here that this uh, this correct shape was obtained not by modifying the gas temperature but rather the uh, SED properties or more particularly in this case the X alpha term which is caused by the lamin alpha photons. Let us also look at an alternative model in which we modify our uh, star formation history rather than the uh, uh, lamin alpha coupling or at the X-ray photon terms. Uh, so this in this case I am going to change my star formation history uh, and all and a co interesting consequence of this star formation history uh, modifications is that we can make new predictions for the galaxy surveys uh, such as uh, those uh, caused, uh, uh, those uh, made by the JWST program. Uh, so the idea is same as in my previous calculation. We are going to basically reverse engineer our given observation and make predict and obtain what is the required star formation history. So this time I am going to keep my star formation efficiency as a free parameter, and uh, uh, the left panel shows the star formation efficiency with respect to my fiducial model. Of course, uh, in my fiducial model, I have I have used the uh, constant value which was independent of the uh, halo mass or the redshift but clearly we require a z dependent uh, function. On the right hand side is the corresponding star formation uh, rate density and this has features similar to the uh, case one in which uh, I had modified my SED properties. So there are again two peaks. So the first peak uh, explains the uh, sharp drop in the edges profile and the there is again a rapid rise in the star formation rate which should explain the rapid rise in the edges profile. Again let us see what we get for the 21 centimeter signal once we plug uh, this uh, star formation history into our model pipeline. And again the uh, new curve which is shown by the uh, blue, solid, uh, blue solid line is again a significant improvement as compared to our fiducial model and has a uh, almost a perfect fit with the edges profile. However, if one would really like to obsess over the shape, uh, one might wonder why we do not get a, a correct shape towards the lower redshift, uh, which uh, towards the redshift 17 or 16. And this is mainly because of uh, uh, the lamin alpha and the X-ray photons have an opposite effect on that 21 centimeter signal. So both of these are, since both of them are proportional to the uh, star formation rate uh, at higher redshift uh, star forming galaxies and increasing star formation rate also increases lamin alpha and x-ray but increasing lamin alpha tends to make the signal go downwards whereas increasing x-ray tends to make the signal go upwards and the reverse is true if I decrease my star formation rate and so there is a trade off between the two effects and this is the best uh, that can be achieved. Uh, let us now also look at uh, an interesting uh, consequence of this star formation history and uh, this is what we are uh, going to see now. We see the predictions for the galaxy surveys, made uh, predictions for the galaxy surveys uh, or the JWST program. And for representation, I am showing some of the uh, 
few JWST programs recently launched and uh, their names, survey area and the limiting magnitude are given in the, on the table on the left hand side. Uh, on the right hand side, I want to show uh, a number count of galaxies. The gradient of the number count of galaxies brighter than a certain limiting brightness relative to my fiduciation model and this is shown by the y axis in this panel. On the x axis, I have the red. I think should be uh, uh, should be seen by the new JWST telescopes. The main message that I want to convey through this figure uh, is that given the edges uh, signal, uh, edges measurement of the 21 centimeter signal, we require a higher star formation rate, which makes higher predictions, uh, higher predictions for the brighter galaxy counts for these redshift range. Uh, yeah, I also want to mention a very important point over in, in passing, I do not have time to uh, go into the details of it much, but uh, the because we did this work before the JWST was launched and we found that the recent observations by the JWST indeed require a high star formation rate and the uh, interested readers can uh, find more details in a recent paper by Miroka and Fernando. So, they have compiled uh, several JWST results and uh, they may they make a conclusion to that hint towards the true cosmological nature of the edges signal. Uh, so, let me now conclude my talk. So, we have seen that there have been several papers that describe the uh, depth and the timing of the edges profile, but the shape has received lesser attention in literature. And in this work, I have considered two types of model. Uh, one in the first case in which I modify my spectral energy distribution and in the second case, I have changed my star formation history. Uh, so of course, there are these, these are two extreme models and there may be several degeneracies between the two and uh, there could be infinite models that might able that might be able to explain the edges profile. An interesting consequence is uh, of the second model is that we are able to make new predictions for the galaxy surface. And although in this uh, work I have used edges as an example, but our analysis is quite general and uh, the analysis is applicable to more upcoming 21 centimeter signal observations such as uh, reach. Uh, which is being uh, led by Ilavadi Plera Acido from University of Cambridge and the experiment is being set up in South Africa. And so that is all that I have to and uh, thank you for listening. Nice work. Nice uh, yes, I wanted to know uh, when you estimate uh, number of X-ray photons or number of line alpha um, photons from for a given star formation, uh, what kind of stars uh, uh, do you uh, assume, uh, whether it's a POP3 or POP2, or whether you consider any feedback uh, like uh, Levin Warner feedback or things like that? Uh, no, so we do not consider feedback, we consider uh, the population 2 type uh, star formation model. Uh, so this is, uh, we basically, this is like an extrapolation of the population 2 model towards lower edges at these cosmic non red scales. If you include POP3 kind of stars then uh, how things will change in your calculation you have any uh, so i think uh, okay so we i haven't looked into that but i think the analysis is quite generally we should be able to make easily make uh, new prediction for the population three model as well Hi, uh, it was a very nice talk. So, in the uh, context of POP3 and POP2 stars, okay, yeah, in the context of POP3 and POP2 stars, if I remember correctly, recently, I think Venan, Barkanan, his group worked on a project where they modeled the POP3 to POP2 transition and uh, how fast this transition happens, okay. Uh, 
and you can actually mimic the shape. Uh, okay, yes. I think uh, yeah. that's another. So yeah. you are referring to Thomas Jeffrey Jones' paper? Or? I forgot exactly the first author's ah, okay, name. But okay. I remember uh, Renan was one of the authors. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, I think uh, using the you are basically asking if population three stars are there at high redshift and there is a transition to pop pop two stars. Right. Yeah, it might be able to explain the drop in the signal, but again, not the full shape. Uh, I see. So and in this, uh, yeah. So I think we need to have the full shape. Okay. Into and if I uh, maybe I missed, but how do you explain that flatness? Uh, so yes, yeah, for the flatness is basically it is being captured in that shape. So I can maybe show that shape again. So if let us say if I consider the model one in which I modify the SED property. So I think this this weird shape that you see over here mm -hmm. explains the flatness. So uh, this first peak explains the drop and this one explains the rise and the middle part is explaining the uh, flatness. So, uh, I would uh, mention that this is not achieved by changing the gas temperature, it is changing the spin temperature okay. via the XL product. Thanks. Yeah, so um, nice talk, Shikha. Yeah. So uh, maybe an extension. So uh, could you comment on the fluctuations? Since what happens to the fluctuations when you model it like this way? Uh, so yeah, we haven't looked into the fluctuation part, but I think again the uh, we can easily apply the calculation for the power spectrum as well. Twenty-one same power spectrum. Is that what you are asking? Is that going to be an any extreme case that is being probed by Hera or something? Uh, extreme in the sense, or uh, yes. can it be rude? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So uh, I mean, you're talking about the whole uh, SED, but is there any like I mean integrated quantity which is really important for your uh, calculations, or is it, I mean is it the whole spectral energy distribution that is important? Uh, so yeah, I think it's the uh, total integrated effect. So basically, uh, the plot is uh, sorry, the plot I'm showing is shows the uh, total strength. So for it, my uh, fiducial model, I had used approximately ten thousand Linear series photons. So uh, so for this new model, we would require say ten to be five photons at actual fixed rate. So it's a integrated effect. Okay. So you could, I mean, it would be uh, equally good if you could just code that, right? I mean. Uh would it be? I mean, uh, you're just finally you're tuning one. Uh, yeah, in this case, I'm just uh, keeping it as an extreme model. So I'm just modifying my one single parameter in the full, full model. Yeah, but there are certain degeneracies between that extreme. Uh, we have a uh, uh, couple minutes more. So the second model in terms of the star formation efficiency, yeah. there is changes which are like more than order of magnitude at redshift of uh, 14 or so. That is correct. Will that not already have some uh, observable signature even before JWST like in terms of say something like the infrared background or some such thing and the related thing is that you mentioned the early result from JWST indicate some higher star formation yes, efficiency yes. requirement at higher redshift, yes. but is is that really like more than one order of magnitude at, uh, at that point? Yes. Yeah, so okay. So that's a good point. So basically, uh, the requirements that we demand are do not exactly match uh, with the new JWST results. But I just wanted to mention that uh, 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 that it might be an interesting point to think more about. Uh, yeah, so I think the new observations imply a slightly higher, uh, actually somewhat higher star formation rate, but maybe not as high as we are making in this model. Maybe one final question. Could comment. Yeah, I think Nirupa Master uh, also whether the. Anything other than JWST that is already ruling this out, like infrared background, you say? No? Uh, okay, so uh, for infrared background, yeah, I think there might be signatures uh, in other uh, frequency bands as well. Uh, 
so yeah in this case i have just uh, considered laminar uv basically and x ray but i think it would have effects on other uh, frequency bands as well but uh, i am not showing sure results here for that uh, here okay let's maybe thank shikhar